going to vote. So that's great news. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. My slides are up and we're going to get this party started for all of you. Uh, we've got over 100 people with us today, a new record for our Canvas monitoring training. So we're so glad to have you and welcome to the 2020 general election day of Canvas Zoom webinar. My name is Sailor Jones and I am campaigns director with Democracy North Carolina. I know because I recognize a lot of your names that plenty of you are seasoned voting rights advocates on the call today. Many of you have done election protection work, early voting advocacy, board of elections monitoring, and maybe even some of you have done Canvas monitoring before. Um, and this is a way to finish the hard work you've already started this year, which is what the day of Canvas is in 2020, the end of our work in terms of counting and certifying uh, county votes and certifying the election and more still of you may be new to this type of work but are still anxious to connect and take action in this very important election year maybe you don't know what the day of canvas is and you're joining us for the very first time we welcome you as well regardless we really really appreciate you being here uh, and there is an all-star lineup of folks here to receive you uh, we have with us tonight allison riggs uh, Allison is Interim Executive Director at Southern Coalition for Social Justice, and she also leads the Voting Rights Program at SESJ. We are very pleased to have Allison with us today. It was a long day on the hotline for Allison, um, and we are grateful to have her. We are also grateful to have Alyssa Ellis with us. Uh, Alyssa works as Advocacy Director at Democracy North Carolina, and Gino Nuzzolillo, uh, who I met for the first time in person today. I'd never actually seen what Gino looked like outside of a Zoom box. And I'll tell you friends, it's great. Uh, Gino runs our uh, uh, policy fellows program. And you may have seen Gino's email if you do board of elections monitoring and early voting advocacy. Gino has been helping us lead the way in terms of uh, how counties are leading the absentee work and counting that they're doing right now. So Gino, Alyssa, and Allison are our experts. And I'll turn it over to them in just a moment to talk more about how the Canvas Monitoring Program will pick up where the Board of Election Monitoring Program that Gino leads is leaving off. It's gonna finish the job of making sure every single eligible voter with a correct or curable ballot has that ballot counted. And that is your job as a Canvas Monitor. No pressure, friends. As part of our collective welcome, I want to uh, remind you that Democracy North Carolina is presenting tonight with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice, Allison's organization. And we are nonpartisan organizations dedicated to building a political system that works for every single voter. And we're trying to make sure that every vote counts. And so this presentation is a nonpartisan space. And in that space, we're gonna share information to answer your questions about what might the day of Canvas look like in 2020? And how is it different than in prior years? What is the role of a Canvas monitor in 2020? What is being asked specifically of you when you choose a county to monitor and your potential impact on these crucial, crucial elections? And what we'll do with the information gathered in 2020 and why the information a Canvas monitor like you gathers is so darn important. In fact, this work is so important. We are streaming it live on Facebook right now for others to see as we begin the process of recruiting people to be with us for the day of Canvas, pre-Canvas, and potentially the days after the day of Canvas to fully count absentee ballots. I just wanna make it clear that our experts are experts. And so it's gonna be important that we get you a recording, maybe these slides and more materials, and we'll send all of that to you tomorrow. So thank you for being here. And if you registered and couldn't make it tonight or you need to leave early, rest assured you're gonna get the recording uh, it's coming your way tomorrow. We'll also uh, have our experts leading a Q&A at the end of this. And because Allison needs to leave early tonight, we're gonna move as quickly as we can through the basics so we can get your questions answered. If you have questions, please pop them in the Q&A box. You can direct them to any of our folks who will drop their information in the box, or we will try to answer them generally um, with the folks who are left at the end of the hour. So, at this point, I would love to turn it over to my esteemed colleagues, Alyssa and Allison, um, to talk a little bit about what the day of Canvas is. 
Hi, everyone. This is Allison Riggs. I'm glad to be with you this evening. So canvas is a word that is um, frequently misspelled and even more frequently misunderstood. Uh, canvas is the uh, process post election where the election uh, final count uh, final tally is determined with finality. Um, a lot of folks think that elections get decided and called on election night. Those are um, polling and estimates, those are not final vote counts. Um, and the county canvas uh, precedes a state canvas, canvassing, sort of dealing with all of the final vote counts from all of North Carolina's 100 counties. Um, and we need you to be involved in this canvas process, in particular because of the global pandemic. Um, the way absentee ballots and the volume of absentee ballots um, are going to be dealt with is going to be new this year, and we need your eyes and ears everywhere. So, um, and uh, I've got Alyssa here with me at the end of a very long conference table, table but she'll jump in here and there. Um, when is County Canvas? Tricky question. Technically, it's the 10th day after the election, but there's a lot of pre canvas stuff that happens, including decisions being made. So we appreciate you volunteering. The volunteering may not be enough. Um, and, and I would guess in almost all counties won't be enough. Most of counties have already started processing some absentee ballots. They were allowed to do that starting five weeks before election day. Um, and we're gonna want you to make a few calls and um, dig up a, a few clues and pieces of history before you go into Canvas meetings. If you can attend the pre-Canvas meetings, even better. Um, but we wanna know what the situation is with absentees um, and provisionals before uh, Canvas day, if we can. If we can only get you on, on, on Canvas day itself, that's fine. A, a few phone calls, some chit chat with the county director may be able to answer our questions and your questions. Um, but understand that that you may be jumping in towards the end of the movie um, in a lot of counties. So this is how, yeah, well, we skipped by. So you may have asked yourselves, how do I know what my county did before the Canvas day? That's how. You call, you ask, you get some updates, um, and follow the meeting notices on your county's BOE, uh, the county BOE website, as well as DEMNC's website. Okay, so what is County Canvas? What does it look like? Couple of things. Um, in a lot of counties, it's in a county, the County Board of Elections office, like a conference room type space. In Wake County, it's in a big warehouse. Um, the County Board of Elections members will be there. We do expect some changes in how canvases, county canvases will be conducted because of COVID. Some are moving to different spaces. Some are limiting the number of people um, who can observe in person. Um, some are having remote access. Some are, we're still working on that. We may need your help ascertaining what the access mechanism is. Um, but we're, we're certain that the county board staff are going to be committed to social distancing. Um, and so we need your help. Um, and you, you certainly can do some stuff remotely. I'll tell you, there's nothing like being there in person for Canvas when county board members are uh, reviewing absentee ballots. I think there will be some challenges um, to viewing remotely, um, but we'll learn as we go. Um, and just highly recommend masking up, uh, gl gloves, uh, all safety precautions. But the uh, all five in in an ideal world, all five county board members will be there. Um, I believe quorum is three, so there could be a couple of folks missing. Um, there'll be count. County Board of Election staff, these are, um, and I say this with love, generally the people who are the most knowledgeable in the room. The county board members are lovely people, of course, but the staff are the ones who um, are running operations day to day uh, board members. This is their side gig. So there will, because it's a presidential election, be a lot of partisan observers in many of these counties. Um, so they could be from federal campaigns, local campaigns, um, you name it. These, these could be crowded and you could need to get there early to get in the space in the room if you want to view in person. 
um, attorneys uh, like myself, advocacy groups like Democracy North Carolina, um, media will be there. Um, and it's, it is generally a pretty one-sided event, lots of observation and lots of county board members talking to county board staff, but just know who's in the room. Um, and if you're in one of the bigger counties, almost certainly media will be there. These are public meetings and in North Carolina, you are entitled as a citizen to um, and a taxpayer to observe these public meetings. Um, what I've found, particularly in the last uh, few election cycles as interest in Canvas has increased, is boards can still be a little surprised that people care about it. This is the non-sexy part of uh, election administration. So um, you might, in some of the counties, maybe if you're the, the first uh, Dem NC Canvas monitor there, you, you might get a little bit of a strange look, but you're doing um, really important work and you are entitled to know what goes on at Canvas meetings and preliminary Canvas meetings or pre-Canvas meetings. So what does that mean for you? Don't be intimidated. You have a right to be there. You have to, a right to ask questions. If staff is in the middle of something, they they probably can't answer your question necessarily right then and there, um, but go up, introduce yourself before the meeting, say, if something is, is happening that we can't understand, how can we signal that to you? Can we email you? Can we chat you? If we're not in person, can we raise our hands? Um, you have the right to make to have mechanisms um, offered for public input and for public viewing. Uh, so how is 2020 different? The obvious answer in every single way possible, I know. Um, but <laughs> it's a presidential election year. 2016 was really busy. Um, and that was, you know, folks, if, if you weren't an election nerd, weren't really watching Canvas now. Um, North Carolina has for the last few cycles been tight in um, statewide races and in some local races. Um, Absentee voting is just totally different, both in volume and processes this year, more on that later. Um, and because of the higher than normal rates of absentee voting and national rhetoric suggesting that there might be something suspect about that, there's not, we think Canvas proceedings could become um, much more dramatic. So fun times. All right, so you are going to a county canvas meeting. You have shown up promptly, you get in the door, you're one of the few um, to get a coveted seat um, at in the meeting room. What do you do? You there is frequently um, there are frequently printouts, printouts of provisional ballots, um, recommendations, not people's actual provisional ballots, the number that they've received, the recommendations that they've made, um, they being staff. Staff will often, especially when provisional ballot numbers are big, recommend to the county board, we recommend counting these provisional ballots in full, we recommend counting these provisional ballots in part, um, and hopefully you get more information about, you know, why in part, and then we recommend rejecting these provisional ballots. It could be for no record of registration, et cetera. The more of that information you can get, um, the better. But um, there'll be agendas, anything that's handed out, grab it. Next slide. Oh, no, sorry. It's been a long day. Take lots of notes. Okay. I love you all. Um, some of you may not have the best handwriting. So if you love me, please, 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 if you can um, uh, type <laughs> your notes. Um, there's an electronic form. Uh, we'll take paper and, and um, handwritten notes if, uh, you know, if that's what you got. But if you have a computer, it'd be huge. Um, also super important to try and identify who's in the room. So who's speaking. Like I said, go introduce yourself to county staff before it starts. These are people you want to be in relationship with um, as you do. Civic engagement work with the County Board of Elections for from here on out. So make friends. Um, if you don't know whose name, who's who's who at the beginning of the meeting, I bet you will by the end. So sketch out who's sitting where in front of you. And then at breaks, you can go meet everyone and identify who's talking. Next slide. Um, so 
this is where, um, and Gina will talk about this later, this is where we need all the information that you can hear and jot down. Um, a lot of times, especially in the bigger counties, there, there are big numbers of, of kinds of ballots. Um, so there may not be like the, the, they may be moving quickly um, and you may not always have the opportunity to, to slow them down and ask questions, but there are big categories. So absentee ballots have, can be uh, the term that they'll likely use is deficient. If there's something wrong with it, like a missing voter signature, um, a missing witness signature, a missing witness address. There are deficiencies that are curable and deficiencies that are not curable. I'll get to that in a second when we talk about um, the litigation update. Um, and same thing with provisional ballots. There can be provisional ballots that are um, a voter cast in the wrong precinct on election day. Um, a there's no record of that voter's registration. The voter lives in a new um, apartment complex that isn't on anyone's map yet. And so they're not sure exactly what jurisdiction that voter lives in. These are all the kinds of things. So if you can get the names of the categories and the numbers associated with them, that would be amazing. Uh, yes, again, reiterate, take even more notes. <laughs> um, there are, I have been to county canvases where voters are there. Uh, it's not necessarily the most common thing, but is especially if a, a person is subject to a challenge or has received some sort of notice from the county board, um, it, it may be more, more common that voters show up um, this cycle. So if a voter is there and has had their vote challenged, collect their names and contact information, um, tell them you're working with them and see you just want to help um, and, hand, and give them this phone number. All right, so big issue this year, right? Absentee ballots. We want um, to know so it's still, I, I will give you a spoiler alert, alert on the litigation update. There is, um, there was an extension to the deadline for receipts of absentee ballots. The absentee ballots still need to be mailed and postmarked on election day, but the deadline for receiving those got extended. Um, that's still being disputed in the federal courts. So. I'm sure um, Sailor and Alyssa and Gino can make sure to get you an update as things settle on that front. But the late is, there's gonna be sort of two fundamental questions to determining whether an absentee um, ballot can be accepted um, after election day. It's gonna be whether it's postmarked um, and if it's received by the deadline uh, for absentees. And we, it, it's at these, um, canvas meetings that absentee ballots are officially rejected. We want to get the counts of those and for what reason. Um, and we want to know particularly if uh, absentee ballots are being rejected when the voter hasn't been given notice and an opportunity to cure. I'll explain that more um, as we get down the road here. All right. Um, yes, voters. So I guess this would be a good place to talk about cures. Um, what does the cure mean? You keep using that word, Allison. I don't know what it means. If you send in, an, so we've got a lot of first time absentee by mail voters, right? Um, North Carolina historically has not been an absentee by mail voting state. 4% in 2016 of the electorate participated that way. This year it could be 40% or more. When voters are new to a voting mechanism, they're more likely to make mistakes. So we think absentee um, absentee voters can make mistakes. Uh, a lot of folks um, represented by <laughs> activists and organizers and awesome folks in this Zoom room have been involved in litigation to make sure that if an absentee voter makes a mistake, that they, he or she or they has a, the ability to to fix that mistake. So the first step to fixing that mistake is knowing that you made it. So that's the notice. The county board is supposed to be um, doing a preliminary review of absentee envelopes. That's absentee application is the envelope you put the ballot in. They're supposed to be doing that about daily. And then if they find a deficiency, they're supposed to notify voters within a day. We've been in active litigation um, over this topic for several weeks now. So um, 
we're not certain that folks are being offered the cure as, as quickly as we want them to be, but hopefully they will be um, here starting this weekend. Um, the cure, there are certain things that can be cured and certain things that cannot. Big thing, if you don't have a witness signature, it can't be cured. If the envelope was mailed but not sealed, can't be cured. If you, and this happens if you put two absentee ballots in one envelope, can't be cured. Those have to be, those ballots have to be spoiled or canceled and the voter needs to be offered a new ballot. Um, Big issue is going to be folks who can't get notice in time to cure before the deadline. So essentially, you have to have notice and opportunity to cure before the deadline. If folks are mailing in their absentee ballots and they're only coming in on election day or the, you know, in the few days afterwards, those folks aren't going to have an opportunity to cure, and we um, need to figure out how many of them there are. Um, we do think a lot of races local races all the way up to state legislative races could be tight enough that uh, a few votes really can make a difference. Next slide. Provisionals. Um, so in a presidential election, you'll see a few different categories of provisionals, um, a, a general as opposed to a um, primary. Uh, the HAVA ID requirements, we do not have a photo uh, ID requirement for voting in North Carolina, but um, Congress did um, many moons ago when I was just a baby election lawyer, enact a, a requirement that if you register by mail and don't provide your um, social security number or last four of your social security number or your driver's license number, you will um, you'll be asked to show some form of not some form of non photo ID known as a HAVA document or a photo ID, but it doesn't have to be a photo ID. So it could be any government document, utility bill, bank statement, or payroll stub. It has to have the voter's name and the registration address. If voters show up to vote, they vote, they registered by mail, they didn't, they need to show a HAVA document, they didn't forget it, that's okay. They can um, be allowed to cast a provisional ballot and bring that HAVA document um, after the election to the County Board of Elections. No record of registration. Um, this is a pretty sizable problem on election day. During early voting, we should essentially have very few of or none of these kinds of problems because we have same day registration in North Carolina. So if you show up to early vote and you're not registered, as long as you're in the right county, you'll be able to register and get that um, straightened out. On election day, it's too late. We don't have election day registration. So we wanna document how many um, times that happens. We're in the last few years, DMV has gotten a whole, has gotten better. Um, but we used to have a pretty significant problem with voters registering at DMV, um, but the their registration didn't transfer. So we want to um, keep an eye on folks who are saying, um, I, I had issues with DMV. Next slide. Same day registration. Um, this couldn't. This can come up at a canvas meeting when you same day register. When you register to vote at an early voting site and vote at the same time, the county board is required within 48 hours to send a, a mailing to your house um, to confirm that you live there. Sometimes those bounce back for reasons that have nothing to do with anything nefarious. Um, you live in an apartment complex. I've seen cases of the poll worker filling out the form for the voter and misspelling a name or leaving out a number um, and it just doesn't get transmitted. And sometimes um, it just, they get returned. So if there are SDR ballots that are being denied because the what's called mail verification failed, we wanna know about that. Machine or software issues. Um, so we want to hear if the county board is talking about any what I'll call technology failures. Um, just a heads up, machine is an all encompassing term. It can mean a whole lot of different pieces of um, electronics that are used in uh, the election system. So we 
we prefer you to specify if you can what kind of machine because if you if you send me something about a machine discussion without more information i won't know what you're talking about a common uh, piece of machinery used is the tabulator it's the um, machine that sucks up your ballot when you put it in and the number ticks up one um, tabulators can sometimes have issues weirdly when it's humid um, the tabulator can fog up and shut down um, e-poll books a lot of counties use electronic poll books to check voters in in 2016 we had an issue with the e-poll books in durham um, and then some counties not all uh, use ballot marking devices for voting all counties have some kind of ballot marking device available for um, voters who need access under the americans with disabilities act but these are the different kinds of machines um, We've also seen historically issues with the software that uploads um, tabulated election results to the State Board of Elections website. Um, poor Durham, that also happened in Durham. So um, in 2016, that's the kind of stuff we want to hear about um, what was discussed, who was talking, and how it concluded. Challenges hearing was a voter question about their eligibility to vote. Um, in 2016, we saw a lot of uh, what really were voter challenges and improper challenges at that framed as election protests. But ultimately, it was about candidates and their campaigns standing up and saying voter X, Y, and Z wasn't eligible to vote. Um, and um, sadly, a lot of those that we know of, those were erroneous challenges, um, defamatory challenges made to voters. So if someone is standing up in a county board meeting or papers have been filed with a county board accusing someone of having voted uh, illegally, we want to know about that. Mistakes are made on that. Um, people are careless and we want to protect voters and their reputations. All right, is this where I hand off to Gino? This is absolutely where you hand off to Gino. And I'll remind people, uh, Allison is departing us at 7 p.m. So we are hopeful that if you have questions for her section in particular, that you'll start typing them in the Q&A box so she can see them while Gino is uh, speaking. So without further ado, Gino. Hey, everybody. I'm really happy to be with you all here tonight. And thanks to Allison for giving the rundown on all those uh, technical but very important issues that we're going to see at Canvas. Um, and so as you're taking these notes on machine and software issues or issues of provisional ballots or same day registration, where is that all going to go? It's going to go into our Canvas report form. We have an online form, very similar if you are one of our pre-election board of election monitors. I shouldn't even say pre-election because the election has been happening for you know, a couple of weeks now. But very similar to that form in that it includes entries for each of our issue areas and enough space for you to put as many notes as you want we get to we get to read them and get to enjoy them and you put in as many details as you possibly can uh, you'll have specific entries for particular absentee ballots and particular provisional ballots um, that are either have some sort of issue with them that are not counted you'll be able to put all of those details there and you'll be able to see what this report looks like by going to demnc.co slash canvas report and you can get a kind of sense of what information we'll be asking for um, you'll also be able to include and upload any photos that you took any electronic copies of documents that you received and you'll be able to upload it to that form directly that's kind of the best way for us to receive information because once we get your report it all goes into a centralized internal database, makes it really easy for us to read and then follow up with you if we need to and forward along to our partners um, across the state to respond as necessary, especially if there's some real major issues there. If you, if you need more space, um, feel free to document other observations and send them you know, via email or you can scan it and attach it to elections at democracync.org. You can also do it via mail we have print forms available at demnc.co slash canvas. That's a little bit more friendly for folks who prefer to take their notes and write it down in person. Uh, and you can mail that to us or you can scan it, take a photo of it and email it to us. However, the information gets to us will be great and we'll be able to use it from there. Next slide. So just any questions that you have, you can email us at elections at democracync.org. 
Um, and at some point, you'll also be able to receive my email address as we follow up with you individually to confirm uh, your willingness to volunteer and be a Canvas monitor. And then as we confirm which county you'll be assigned to and which ships uh, you'll, be, you'll be doing during Canvas. For both the pre-Canvas and the Canvas meetings, uh, we're, we're gonna try to make sure we break it up based off your availability and to shifts that you know, last about a minimum of three hours or so, um, just so we make sure that we get coverage at all of our kind of priority counties um, and that you can take a break during these meetings as well because they can be long, but they're chock full of real important information as we finish up the election here in North Carolina. Alrighty, so what does Canvas monitoring require on top of everything that we've discussed in terms of note taking? So the first thing we'll want to say is that there will have to be some sort of willingness to attend a meeting in person. Uh, we don't want to put everyone, anyone in an uncomfortable position, which is why in our confirmation form that we'll send you after this, we'll also be asking folks to indicate their willingness to take part virtually um, if there is a virtual option that becomes available at some of these campus meetings. But as Allison said earlier, um, it does seem that traditionally most campus meetings have been held in person. And given what we've seen from counties this year, uh, we will do all that we can to ensure that that in-person observation is safe. You'll likely participate in a minimum of a three hour shift, but we encourage you to, to do more, make a whole day out of it, make a party out of the day of Canvas. Party might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, we encourage you to sign up for more shifts, but we'll ask that you sign up for a minimum of at least one, um, either on the day pre-Canvas, which is generally November 12th, or the day of Canvas on November 13th, and potentially, depending on how contentious and how many issues counties are dealing with, the Canvas could extend into the week of November 16th through the 20th. And you'll also see a spot on our confirmation form for you to indicate what your general availability might look like. And then finally, um, if it is a situation that you encounter and you feel comfortable doing so, uh, we'll also share with you the instructions to call our Canvas specific hotline. You'll be able to call the hotline at 855-4-WE-VOTE. And we can share what the actual number is there too, because I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's 855-4-WE-VOTE. And you'll be able to either share that hotline with uh, affected voters at Canvas hearings, or you'll be able to use it yourself if there's a particularly urgent or important issue that you're encountering. It can come directly to one of us who's going to be monitoring those, these Canvas meetings all across the state all across North Carolina. And we'll be able to provide PPP, P, PPE uh, to any Canvas monitor who needs it, just email us at elections at democracync.org because we wanna make sure above all that y'all are safe. And you know, why, why do Canvas monitoring? I mean, as, as you can tell from what Allison shared earlier in this meeting, what, what Sailor shared at the beginning, uh, you're, you're pretty darn important. Your observations on or before Friday, November 13th will help our election experts. And I know somebody asked a question on this, so I hope this helps provide a little bit more clarity, but it helps us, uh, helps votes count in real time, hashtag count every vote. Uh, it'll help us flag local elections problems that are happening also in real time. And it helps inform how we advocate or litigate for better elections policies in the future and better voting access in future elections. And because of the, the scale of this election, because we're expecting such high turnout, because we're expecting so much attention, we think this canvas, this canvas is going to be a pretty good sample for what we need to change in elections going forward. So that makes y'all super, super important. I know just from the Board of Election Monitoring we've been doing before the election, that sometimes this note-taking can get really technical and might not seem uh, super sexy as we were saying earlier, uh, but just know that your notes that you're taking now are already helping to change this election and helping to count every vote and it will during Canvas as well. Everything you need is gonna be at demnc.co slash Canvas. And thank you, Gino. I really appreciate you going through that. We're doing this a little differently than we've done it in the past and it's worth letting folks know how we're uh, trying to keep them safe amid a process that uh, requires uh, largely in-person Canvas monitoring. So we really appreciate that. As a reminder, uh, as Gino said, in the coming days, 
you'll receive an email with a recording of this webinar, as well as the slides you see here, a modified cheat sheet, not only with what we share tonight, but also answers to some of the frequently asked questions we have in the Q&A tonight, as well as, as Gino described, a short confirmation form where we'll ask you to firm up your commitment to monitor Canvas. You'll be able to mark your willingness to work in person um, with a virtual option if it's available or both. Um, knowing, as Allison said, that there may be multiple days of Canvas this year, taking in consideration all of the absentee ballots. Um, once we receive your confirmation form, we'll, you'll receive a personal email with a detailed explanation of your assignment uh, during the day of Canvas, so you're a little bit more secure in knowing what we're asking you to do. You'll get a reminder about the report form you can use to gather information while you volunteer, and that's your opportunity to grab Gino's email or my email or Alyssa or Allison's email and ask any final questions you may have. Obviously the landscape is changing right underneath us. We're in a global pandemic. The elections are changing all the time. We have record absentee voting and probably in-person voting given the number of calls we got today. And so you may have last minute questions and we're here to help. Uh, in short, you have registered to be a Canvas monitor by registering for this training. And we'll be in touch soon to confirm whether you indeed want to do in-person Canvas monitoring, whether you can dedicate a three-hour shift, and uh, whether you can provide back to us online or in print, but preferably, as Allison said, online, reports back to us about the information you gather from these county canvases. So with that, I want to take some time to uh, uh, review any questions that were in the Q&A box, uh, including sharing some of the FAQs we've called over the past hour. Taylor, if you're with us, uh, were there any FAQs um, that have or have not been answered that might be worth sharing um, and answering for the entire group? Yes. Uh, so we have a question that we think Allison should uh, touch on. Uh, when it comes to challenges that are going on, should we be recording them, whether it be video or audio? Uh, hey, it's Allison. Um, it's not a, you, North Carolina is a one side consent state. I can tell you in most cases, I sincerely doubt your phone will capture sound that will be super helpful um, to us unless you're sitting it up near um, whoever's talking and whoever's talking is gonna be spread out. So you can try it i personally wouldn't recommend um dying on that hill your notes are going to be more helpful to us we think those are also going to be ginormous audio files this could canvas hearings could go on for a little bit not to scare anyone off um and so transmitting those kinds of big audio files and us listening to them isn't the best way of us processing questions and information um, your notes are your brains are Awesome, thank you. And then what about photos in general? Like, do we think we'd see anything that's useful enough to take a photo? Um, so the, they will be a little bit careful about photo, allowing you to photo near um, confidential parts of absentee envelopes. So they may not, like me, when I, in the past media tends to be, when absentee ballots have been much lower, sort of set up in the back of the room if they're there. Um, there is information on absentee envelopes that has to be redacted um, before public viewing. So again, it's it's one of those things that I wouldn't say is, um, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that. I would focus on, on taking good notes and um, chatting with the people around you to make sure you've identified the speakers and who's present. Awesome. And do we know if uh, all of these counties are requiring masks or social dis and social distancing, or is it just recommended? Good question. I don't think we have final firm answers on that. Um, I suspect that they, um, it, it's, it's not like voting, which is a fundamental right, and, and we don't want to turn away voters for um, not having a mask or 
even foolishly choosing not to wear a mask. That's how important that right is. Um, the right to attend a public hearing isn't that kind of fundamental. So it wouldn't surprise me if county boards, if some county boards did ask uh, folks to wear masks, um, but we, we haven't seen any sort of final guidance on that. And one thing we can share from what we've learned from board of elections meetings that are happening right now is that boards of elections and their staff um, I've been pretty good about wearing PPE themselves. And as people come to their in-person meetings, um, offering them hand sanitizer, offering them masks. And it seems like many of the attendees seem to follow those guidelines, but like Allison said, there's no firm guidance and no clear requirement on those. But we know that county boards who've been holding in-person meetings have been taking it fairly seriously. And while we don't know exactly how Canvas will look yet, uh, we hope and you know, expect that it'll be much, uh, that'll look much the same during Canvas as well. And someone asked um, if y'all could share an example of how this worked last time or the last few times we've done it where, uh, you know, attending a Canvas meeting meant we learned something that we were able to fix. What's a good example of real-time work? So I've got a couple in um, March of 2016. It was the one time we had a photo ID requirement for voting um, and we had voters casting reasonable impediment provisional ballots. There were uh, reports that we got from the monitoring Canvas monitoring program that explained in much um, better detail sort of a narrative where the reasonable impediment process was failing, that the raw data alone didn't. In 2016, um, in the general election, we didn't have photo ID, but we had um, a campaign filing election protests, um, improper election protests in dozens and dozens of counties across the state. And your information allowed um, allowed us to make sure that the state board of elections knew where these were happening and knew um, how frivolous these protests were and the state board ended up assuming jurisdiction over all of the protests and making one joint ruling in a way that was um, favorable so that was based on information who was making these challenges on what grounds um, the fact that there were uh, these protests being made were essentially challenging the eligibility of indi individual voters. I was in a Canvas meeting in Wake County where we were looking up um, alleged uh, double voters and, and showing how the people um, being challenged as having voted in state A and state B, so you know Florida and North Carolina, were actually two, two very different people. Um, and so like at breaks, we would point that out to, to staff and to board members. So like that's the kind of stuff that can be happening um, that we can't see if we don't have monitors there. Great. And uh, Gino, how are we spreading out our volunteers? Like how are we targeting counties and assigning volunteers to them? Yeah, that's a great question. So. If I remember at last count, we've got so anywhere between 30 to 40 kind of top counties that, that we know from historical experience have had a couple different issues with them uh, that we know are major metropolitan centers that we know that we have a lot of good supporters and longtime advocates in. And coming into this training and coming into this season, we've uh, kind of identified and prioritized those counties and then sorted the rest going down the line from there. And so what we'll do and what I'll be doing is once this training is over and I've sent you all the confirmation form and you've either A, indicated the county that you prefer um, and your second preference, or B, we use the information that you inputted um, on the original form that you used to sign up for this training, which was how far you might be willing to travel for campus. I'll use a combination of those two responses to be able to assign each of y'all your shifts and your counties and the days that you'll be on. Uh, and we'll be following up with you individually to make sure that, especially for all of our kind of high, high, high priority counties, we've got at least one to two people in each of those and that we fill in as much of the rest of the counties as possible. I mean, as y'all know, there's 100 counties in North Carolina. So we're gonna do our best to try to get in as many of them as possible. Uh, but we have prioritized them based off just what we know historically and what we're learning right now as the election is happening. Um, 
and we will slot y'all in based off those priorities and based off all those considerations that I just laid out. Thanks, Gino. Um, Susan asks, are the BOEs required to try to cure problems with, request, with requests for the absentee ballots? So with a with a request, it's not so much about a cure. It's just an insufficient request to trigger the sending of an absentee ballot. Um, that is not something that um, there's been a federal court ruling. We do think that um, most folks are either able to see um, if there's if their um, absentee ballot request form has been received or rejected, some of them through ballot tracks, some of them through uh, county boards of elections, and some of them saying, hey, I I sent it, I mean, they get a call saying, you're, you, you know, you, the wrong person made a request, this person wasn't eligible to make a request for you, but there isn't that kind of um, care process. So well before we get to absentee, if folks submitted an absentee request form and then heard nothing, um, the counties and the state board have said, you know, seven to 10 days, <laughs> and this was way back when, <laughs> seven, to day, seven to 10 days, if you haven't um, gotten your absentee, you should start calling the county board of elections. We're getting close to the point where it's gonna be too late to start this process. We may be at this point. So, um, you know, again, it's, it's why we worry about um, generally folks waiting till the last minute, things are, are can get caught up in the mail and um, set, get behind. Gotcha. And uh, will the analyzed up until the day of Canvas or will all of those issues be discussed again, you know, during the two meetings that we'll be present at? Um, you, you I lost reception for a second. You were asking, will absentee cures be discussed at all the, the meetings? Sorry, well, the challenges, I, as I read it, I was, I lost my train of thought as well. <laughs> it's a long question. Um, so the question reads, will the pre-Canvas challenges and rejections be finalized up until the official Canvas day, or will all of those issues, I think, be rediscussed again um, during the, the two Canvas days that we'll be present for? It's a good question, and um, the answer is it depends, as as frequently is the case. Um, the deadline for filing just a sort of challenge to a voter's uh, eligibility to be registered is 25 days before the election, unless the the challenge is made to the voter at the precinct. So you could be getting election day challenges coming in. There's also an absentee challenge process that is triggered by the res the res seat deadline, which right um, is in dispute. <laughs> maybe the day of Canvas, maybe um, 10 days, uh, sorry, uh, seven days earlier. That's still unclear. By statute, it's three days after the election. Um, the State Board of Elections tried extending it to the day of Canvas. It's in legal dispute. If there are receipts and ch thus challenges up until Canvas Day, it will certainly be discussed. Um, if they are, um, you know, there may be in untimely voter challenges that sort of get dismissed by staff in before you get to the Canvas meeting. Um, there may be some uh, if the the board hasn't hasn't pre canvassed or hasn't pre canvassed on the challenge issue, or has given notice to a voter about a challenge, um, it may very well may happen while you're there. Thank you. And then, what happens to ballots that are received after November third without a postmark? So the term postmark is not actually defined in statute. Um, I mean, it says postmark, but there's um, uh, ballot tracks is a really neat tool that's newly de um, new this year. And ballot tracks has ways of tracking where your ballot is and when um, based on scans that get done of the ballot. So um, it's become more, more common that uh, 
first class mailings don't have that old school kind of um, postmark stamp on them, but they do have barcodes on them um, and there can be evidence that it was actually sent by the deadline. Uh, on election day without it being like old school postmark. So it, it's going to depend on the outcome of this election. Right now, the state board wants to um, interpret that as broadly as possible to include any evidence that the ballot was mailed by um, the deadline on election day. Thank you. Um, and then something that people have been asking a lot is how quickly do we need to, do we need your reports? And we would hope to get your reports same day, either during the meeting or right after, just so that Allison can get to work on doing the best things with all of that information. Um, and Allison, could you put your email in the chat, um, someone so that they didn't get it at the beginning of the training? Sure can. And friends, just as a reminder, you'll receive all of these slides with all of our email addresses. But if we haven't put our emails in the chat, we can do so now. And then Sailor, could you go back to the hotline slide so folks could save that into their phone now as well? Absolutely. And uh, we could drop it into the chat as well. Um, it is, let's make sure I can find it, 855-4-WE-VOTE. That's 855-4-WE-VOTE. Awesome. I think, I think we've gotten through all the, the most frequently asked questions, so many. That is a miracle, friends. <laughs> um, that was our, our least questiony Canvas monitor training. But of course, uh, Allison and Gina are beasts and they can pretty much share good amount of information in a 45 minute span. I've heard it, friends, it's a lot. We also had a few questions in the chat about um, who can be a Canvas monitor, asking if uh, we can have out of state Canvas monitors. Uh, anyone who's a great note taker can go to any county and monitor the Canvas. In fact, note taking is the biggest prerequisite. You need not reside in the county that you monitor. In fact, Allison, uh, myself, and another volunteer were um, double duty, triple duty, note taking in Robeson County back in 2016. None of us live in Robeson County. Um, and also, there was the question about can you bring someone under 18? If they're a great note taker, too, bring them along. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Canvas monitor training, uh, Canvas monitoring uh, meetings are not a bar, and alcohol is not served. So people under 21 under 18 can be there. It is a public meeting. Uh, you will want alcohol at the end of that if that's your jam, but uh, no, uh, you can bring someone under 18. Um, we are at 655. Uh, panelists, is there anything else you wanted to add before uh, we let folks go? I'll take the silence as a no that you in 25, 26 slides said everything you needed to say about Canvas monitoring. Friends, we will be in touch. Um, again, the hotline is 8554-WE-VOTE. But the more important thing for you to have is this. I'm getting to the slide, elections at democracync.org. You'll be receiving an email either from Gino or from elections at in the coming days um, with a confirmation form uh, to make sure you're ready to rock in terms of Canvas monitoring and a little bit more information uh, gathering around shifts and assignments. So this is a, a good time for you to be with us. We really, really appreciate your time tonight um, after the first day of early voting and a big shout out to the panelists, all of whom were answering questions on the hotline all day long. So we're grateful to have you and we really appreciate it. For everyone on the Canvas monitoring training, thanks for being here with us. Um, have a safe evening and we'll be in touch soon. Thanks so much. <laughs>